As we welcome in our co-hosts on this terrific Thursday, he is New York Times best-selling author John Gilstrap, Mr. Gilstrap. Good morning, Rob. You uh, maybe maybe to the uh, viewer you don't look any different today, but to me, you look like you're six feet taller. Well, yes, I got a different chair. I mean, you're propped up like you're getting a haircut or some barber's chair, man. You're the, well, here, up to you. here in the studio, we have various chairs, and where I sit. In my previous chair, I would look at you, but all I would see is stuff. There's yeah, a, back a of a computer. the back of a computer screen and all this. So I got a taller chair, so I actually can like see your eyes and such, and I can see the guest over here. It used to be that all I would see is the bridge of their nose and their eyes, so I'm sitting a little higher. Are you happier from this vantage point? So far, nose isn't bleeding. It, it's a little like being six years old. My feet don't touch the floor, but there's a little <laughs> bar along the bottom of the stool where I can put them. So was it the was that. When my kids were little, they used to watch some show where some woman sat on a huge chair and, and looked like a little tiny thing inside on a huge chair. Was oh, it that was a uh, comfy uh, couch or something like that. What was um, it? Uh, laugh in. Uh, uh, not Emily Latella. Um, Ruth Buzzy. Ruth Ann. Yeah. And okay. that's the truth. All right. All right. Yeah. I'll go with that. Also, uh, he is the Jefferson County prosecuting attorney, freshly shaven. Natalie Clad, not any longer. Now he's uh, got the seal sucker on. Matt Harvey. He's calling you Natalie again. I know. Well, it's, I'm not that freshly shaven. It's It's been a few months now. Has it been months? Yeah. And I know where John's old chair went because I'm sitting in it. I, I come in and sit down today. <laughs> and I was like, Do I feel short. Maybe I, could, maybe I could buy a couple of John's books to but, sit on. But you always had that chair. That's, that's always oh, been a stubble field chair. Oh, gosh, chair. Rob. That was... Uh, you, it just looks different you know, because Gil's I was taking tired. a little bit of... Uh, artistic liberty with that and uh for some entertainment purposes and you just shot that down with logic well you're an attorney you deal in facts i thought not, we we're still I'm on not that an page attorney on here i'm not an attorney on here you're once you're an attorney you're always an attorney uh, it's a way of thinking <laughs> right don't you think I, well you live by a certain code fact the law no not necessarily i come on here and talk Let's say good morning to our first guest yeah. of the day. You see, I think you're skipping the lead here. He's rocking the seersucker suit. I tried he's, to. Do. He's, I tried doing, to. he's doing the essence of Southern lawyer. I tried right to. Now. Right, I it's did not mention seersucker. It. Yeah, yeah, seersucker. Jason Baker is our guest, uh, city of uh, Martinsburg Councilman, Ward 5. JB, good morning to you. Good morning. Thank you. I didn't know about the chair situation. Next time I'm warm, I have to negotiate chair selection. There is nothing that creates more action in this room than what chair you get. Okay. Because the chairs are so dramatically different. There's three different styles of chairs in here. And nobody's happy with any single one of them at any given time. Okay. And on Fridays, where both of those seats are taken, where you are, yeah. if there's one in the short chair and one in the tall chair, <laughs> and they're both covered with the same camera, it is a very odd shot. I do my it's best a- to make sure that doesn't happen. So I'll, I'll put the taller person further back. I do actually take that into consideration. I shouldn't have to, but that's the chair situation. <laughs> well, Jason, it's been a few months since we visited with you. It we has. had elections since then. Absolutely. And uh, everybody who wanted to return, returned. Yes. Right? Yes. I had to think about it there for a second. But yes, yeah, all the incumbents won. Um, some of us were unopposed. Yeah, most of you. Um, and, uh, of course, we have a new at large since Corey decided to step away. Mm-hmm. And uh, has, has everybody been sworn in? Has that taken effect now? The whole new council is seated? We are. We All are right. seated. We've had two meetings. Yeah. How's, how are they going? Good. How's the dynamic? Any change? There's always change. I think there's change in between. Even if you have mostly the same council, there's a little bit of change just because of what we see or what we're going to see. Mm-hmm. Kind of. You know, you know, changes our council a little bit. The city elections kind of, for lack of a better way of putting it, snuck up on everybody because they're right after the primaries, about three weeks later or so, and they didn't get a lot of attention. It did not, and it did not get it didn't get a lot of turnout either, a historically low turnout. And I'm wondering if the two were connected. Do you think that the primary on May the 14th had an effect on the June Martinsburg elections? Actually, I've been on your show. We've talked about it. Yeah. I, I do think it has some effect on turnout, but I also think that with everything that's going on nationally, with just the polarizing of the Republican and Democratic Party, 
I think people are starting to tune out politics, and I think they're getting fed up with the crap. And I think that the the local politicians, I think we're the we take the brunt of it, um, because that's who they get to see. But realistically, you know, the local we're the ones that are going to affect your life probably more so than the national. Mm -hmm. I think that had more to do, my personal opinion, had more to do with this election um, than anything else. Why do you suppose so many of the seats were unopposed? Only only, uh, two of the five ward seats had opposition. I think there's multiple reasons that could be. Um, One, people think that you're doing a good job and it takes a lot of time and I think I go back to my previous statement if these people are getting fed up with hearing about national politics and the in this battle between two sides it keeps people away do that you know do you really want to be part of that do you want to be in in that battle ground mm-hmm. and I think that has a lot of effect of it too Two references to national politics, so let's go there for a minute. As uh, Joe Biden is the head of the Democratic Party in the country, as the president, highest-ranking elected official, has uh, made the decision to not run for re-election and put his support behind Kamala Harris, the vice president, who will be, we presume, the Democratic nominee for president once they get around to their convention in August. As a registered Democrat, your thoughts on the top of your party right now? I believe that... uh Joe did what was best for his family and for himself. And I think that it was probably a logical endorsement for his vice president. He already picked her once. And as someone who loves politics, I'm pretty excited about a couple weeks of the convention and see how this all plays out. Because for my lifetime, this is uncharted. You know, historically, it's not that uncharted. But is well the president stepping away it yeah. is but lbj would have been the last one almost 60 years ago um but so i'm pretty excited about that and i think that uh it opens the door for some more moderate candidates mm-hmm. possibly to come out of the democratic party hopefully so that maybe some states it'd be nice for some states to get back involved in the race instead of it being just a handful of them john I, this is where i'm going to go but I, I thought kamala has the pretty much locked up at this point enough of the pledged delegates that there's some talks about it you never know till you know okay D- does that mean you don't support her i don't it doesn't really matter in the state of west virginia does it no <laughs> it does a little fatalism. It, it's. I, I want to go back to city politics. Uh, we had Matt Umstead uh, on the show yesterday, Monday, I guess, and um, you know he's he, in charge of the Roundhouse and was talking about city support for the Roundhouse and opening up the amphitheater and that and that sort of thing. What do you, where do you stand on city support for bringing artistic venues into the city and uh, with the Roundhouse in particular, the amphitheater? So I am for anything that brings people into our town um i'm excited for you all were talking about it earlier about the american legion baseball we help support getting that field in shape so things like this can happen great looking field um so i'm excited for those kind of things i'm excited for the roundhouse to do more we moved our fireworks back so that um multiple reasons one it's safer to be away from the interstate but two, more of the city can see them. But it, the perfect location to see those fireworks is the roundhouse. So we're hoping that that'll grow. Um, we want more recreational, and hopefully the, like, the roundhouse will have more recreational stuff going on um, because there's a lot of stuff that you could put in temporary on the grounds to, if it's um, pickleball, or if it is a temporary soccer field, or Matt had talked about a few years ago when he was still um, at the uh, Herald about using one of the buildings and doing an indoor pool at the Roundhouse. Um, Not sure that that's possible. That's for engineers to determine if that's allowed first Mm -hmm. and and then there, but 
any of those things I support 100% because I think that the more people that we get to come into our community, the more our businesses will secede, which will build a better quality of life for every resident in the city. Seems like a natural location for an amphitheater, doesn't it? It really does. It really, I, mean, I, I think there are parking issues and such that have to oh, be taken yeah. care of. Parking's terrible. Yeah. That can be fixed. That can be fixed. Yeah, absolutely. Right. What is the current breakdown in terms of funding, ownership, or whatever between Berkeley County, City of Martinsburg, and private ownership? As far as the Roundhouse? Yeah. They're their own entity that's under, that was by state. Um, but the building itself is owned by themselves. Okay. By the Roundhouse Authority. All right. And the county. It is, it is a little bit odd ownership. It, the way that it was funded, that first group of funding, which would have been, somebody will have the date right in there, the 90s, when they first kind of saved the property. Mm -hmm. And then um, the state made some legislations to start that authority. They were, the city and the county, um, you know, the county puts the board members on. They've always been good about putting um, a councilman or a representative from the city onto there if they want to be on. I was on the Roundhouse um, Authority for three or four years. Um, my father was on, on there when he was the Ward 4 councilman. Normally it's Ward 4 councilman because it sets in mm -hmm. their ward. Um, so they've always been good about that, but we have no financial. We've given some money. We've done some different stuff, but we are not tied to them financially at all. Matt Harvey. Uh, Jason, I, I see, and you may not have anything to do with this or, or any thoughts on it, but that the old federal courthouse is back on the market. I do. I've um, seen it is. Yeah. So it, it looks like it's priced to sell, I guess, for a building like that. But um, any any thoughts that the, that the city could, uh, could purchase it or – is there issues with the building that that the current owner is selling it that you know you're aware of? I don't know of any issues with the building in particular. I've heard crazy rumors of of different cost of what like just a roof would cost on that building. Um, is it is it a slate roof? I'm there's some slate and there's some um, some metal work that are up is up on it. Um, I'm sure there's it has a lot of asbestos in it. Wouldn't, not sure. Not going to throw anybody under the bus with it. I think it's a cool building. I think that <clears throat> it could be, it well, it would be. Restored would be one of those buildings that people would come to Barnesburg to see. Because it's, it's unique. I mean, there's not another building quite like it in the city of Martinsburg. It makes you think of much bigger cities that have those yeah. types of architecture. Um, what is it like has, inside? Is it? Is it a is it a, a ruin inside or is it Pretty stable much. inside? It looks stable. From last time I was in the building, it was stable. I it mean, used to be an art gallery years and years ago. Yes, yeah. I mean, I it looks similar to when I remember it when it was in operation when I was a kid. Was it a post office then? Um, there was still some offices in it. I don't think the, the post office had moved across the street where the federal building is now. But there were still some offices in there. And I was a kid. I don't remember exactly why. I've already received two comments about parking being awful there. Awful where? That building. What could be oh, done yeah. to improve the parking in that area, I guess, is a question. Which comes back to a downtown parking garage that people Well, somebody ask could about. buy it and just make it a primary residence. Well, I, you, know the, you know the best thing I heard? This Facebook, it'll get you down a bad path sometimes. Chris. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but, some, but somebody posted, and I was reading through the comments, which is never a good idea. No. But this one was good. And somebody said the perfect solution there would be some type of food downstairs and a boutique hotel upstairs in the other floors. But you'd have like, like Airbnb yeah. and then like a thing. I don't know who made the post, so whoever did that good credit to you. Mm -hmm. I was like. That's cool because that would let the average person experience the building and then have something there for people. And it does have parking issues, um, that in particular. But, uh, but, we, but you're also one block from a parking garage or a parking 
light, not a garage. Mm-hmm. And my son was just at a running camp in north in northeast up in Massachusetts. Every time we went somewhere, I parked at least a block away and went somewhere. I know, and that cracks me up because for whatever reason in Martinsburg, if you can't park exactly where you want to shop, it's a parking problem. Yeah, and we've had three studies done, Yeah, and every study has told us we do not need a parking garage. We have too much parking. The problem in the city with parking is we have too much parking. Mm-hmm. Now, it's been a while since the study was done. I'm sure that the mayor, I know he has been championing for a parking garage. Um, I'm sure he's going to bring it back up to us for another study, at least, to talk about. Um, but I kind of believe it. Because if you do some traveling, if you if you get around, that's what you see. You, a block is nothing not a big to deal. walk. Right. Yeah, and a, a parking city. garage is not, in and of itself, it's, it's cost prohibitive. Because the cost to build it per space is exorbitant. And it's not attractive. So The only one that I really like that I thought was huge for economic is the one that's in the Hagerstown. It's, um, they built one that's in the alley. Mm-hmm. The buildings are in the front. Mm-hmm. Um, Bulls and Bears restaurant is in, is in the building. That one I thought was an interesting way of how they blended that one into the facade. Yeah gave the parking to some of them, but also you kind of go around the block and get in. That I could see being, but just standing alone. Here's our parking Lump of garage. cement, yeah. Uh, some, yeah. some cities, I think Frederick has done this too, have done a good job of blending brickwork in to make it kind of match with what's around it in the city too. Yeah. But in, unless, and I think Kevin Knowles, the mayor pointed this out, unless you get some type of major hotel investment where the parking garage is part of that and the city kind of goes in on that in some way. Other than that, it's pretty cost prohibitive to just build a parking garage, especially in an era where most people are shopping online. Right? If you if you're building a parking garage now to accommodate people downtown, you might be a little late and expensive on that. Yeah. Right? I I, I don't know. I know it's been it's a talking point that's been my entire tenure on council park garage. Ten years from now, it'll still be a question. And I don't. And I think the answer is still the answer. Hey, I want to circle back to the city elections here in the final few minutes that we have here, uh, and, and we can do some other things too. But uh, you, just your thoughts on the mayor's election uh, with uh, Kevin Knowles, the incumbent, and, and he was challenged by a person who had a popular online following, so to speak. Your thoughts on that race and and the other two races that were contested. Uh, the tone of it, the content of it, and, and uh, the general feel of it. Um, well, I'll go from at large back. So I think the at large, I think that there was uh, there was different points of view for that election. I think people were able to select the people who they thought were the best. So I, I think that worked out well. Um, Ward 4, I think you had the incumbent. Kimberly, who worked hard, and she went out and put her name out there and uh, was happy with with the result of the election. And then with the mayor, um, I was supporting Kevin. Um, We've been on the council in one facet or another the entire time together. Um, I wish that the election would have been more on one side of it would have been a little bit more factual about good facts. Mm -hmm. You know, it's easy to get on Facebook and say whatever the heck you want to say and try to confuse people and say, this is, you know, using county and city and putting it together. We're two different entities and we're also not in charge of the school system. And to be pretty frank, it upset me because we get enough confusion about what we can and what we can't do. We don't need a candidate spewing things that are just absolutely false. Mm -hmm. And, you know, for somebody just to attack somebody online because they get upset with what they're saying, I I think we move past that. And I don't condone that kind of behavior. And I think the right person won the election. I figured you're usually a person with strong opinions. I figured you'd have some strong opinions on this, and you didn't disappoint, clearly. Hey, as the summer has gone along, uh, and one of the things that you were championing uh, a couple of years ago was keeping Lambert 
pool open. It is. It is. It's functioning. Has it continued to function efficiently throughout the summer? Uh, we've had no issues whatsoever. Um, they did a night swim, which I think was very successful. And I want to speak of that because our previous conversation of, of something that was said, um, but I want to make it very clear. Last year, Lambert Pool wasn't open because we got bad advice from the people that were in charge of the rec center. It wasn't an issue that the city wanted to close that pool or that we wanted to shut down. That person's no longer in that position and they decided to let that go and we have a new person with the rec board. But a city council or any big group is responsible to hire good people and then let them do their job. And then if we find out that they don't do their job, then they're terminated and we move on. That's what happened last year. Bad advice happened, and that's why that pool, and it's a shame. You're saying the pool could have stayed open? The pool, absolutely. If we, would have, if we would have had good advice from it, we probably could have got it open last year. And I don't know that anybody has came on this show or any other show and been very clear about that. Nope. But, and it's not on the council. We, when you hire somebody, you expect them to do their job. And it, you expect them to give you the right information when they come to a council and when they tell us that we don't, this pool can't be saved and it can't do this, it can't do that, and it would be cost effective, you expect to, those people to be honest. The people that work in your prosecuting office, you would expect them to do their job. And right. if not, you let them go. That's right. And it's the same thing on the damn council. Sorry. You can say damn. Um, but it upsets me. Because it's one of those false things that gets said and makes makes us as the council look bad. No, we want you to do your job. And I'm glad the pool is open. That doesn't stop us from continuing to look at an indoor pool facility or a better pool facility. But we are doing what we're supposed to do. And we will hold everybody accountable for what they are supposed to do. Was the city the driving force return, uh, regarding the termination of the previous Parks and Rec director? I think no one was happy would be my official answer on that. On the city council or all the entities? I think everybody was unhappy. Very good. Hey, we've got a minute left. Is there anything city business-wise you want to make sure people know about? Yeah, just, just some great things that have happened. Well, of course, King Street's open. I'm sure everybody's happy about King Street being <laughs> open. And now everybody's having an opportunity to drive by the Interwoven. As it's coming up and anybody up. living there yet there is the first first phase of the first phase is complete so there's some people living and interwoven um, I went on a tour and it's really nice nice to see something and uh, now what's more exciting that's exciting for in, in general I'm excited for national fruit if you've been going around Queen Street and they've clean, they started cleaning up the site they've started doing some repairs um, to get ready for the collagen plant I think that that will be a major economic boost when it is operational. When they get done, um, it'll be tremendous. Um, and we're cleaning up a blight. You know that had yes. been a, that had been an area that is big. And so you think about five years ago, that was two major industrial sites inside the city that were a haven for drug activity, crime. Um, homeless population that are gone, completely gone, Own, and not one cent by by local money. This is private entity. Councilman Baker, great to visit with you again, sir. Thanks for having me. Great to have you. It's uh, time for our bottom of the hour break. When we return, Jackie Long and Melissa Power from the Berkeley County Board of Education. No 